Hey everyone, it's Steph. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Pride and Prejudice. Before we talk about the book, I'm going to talk about my road to the book. Because reading this book was not my first exposure to the story. I originally saw the 2005 Keira Knightley and Matthew McFadden movie. Once I saw that, I fell in love with the story, fell in love with that movie. I know it's not accurate to the book, as I learned, as we will get to in a moment, but it's beautiful and I love it and I will never not love it. That being said, after watching that movie a million times, I ended up listening to this book on audio about three, four years ago. I have since seen the BBC adaptation with Colin Firth, and I more recently was just thinking how nice it would be to be able to identify quotes from this story that I really enjoyed and be able to kind of sift through this with a fine tooth comb, so to speak, now that I know the story and kind of catch more of the nuances that I probably I missed on audio or just haven't retained since reading it a little while ago. I was fortunate enough to be gifted a copy of Pride and Prejudice for Christmas and my husband found this really great copy. This isn't an ad or nobody's asked me to say this, but I have to say this edition was so cool. My husband just wanted to find something Jane Austen and something to do with puzzle books because I love puzzles, whether it be word search, crosswords I like as well, things of that nature. I love to figure out stuff like that. This is Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice and Quiz Book. So it's a complete novel, plus it has quizzes at the beginning of each chapter, and it has crosswords or word search at the end of each chapter. Um, it says before you begin, and it tells you different ways to use the quizzes to kind of maximize your reading comprehension as well as your enjoyment of the story. You can take the quiz after you get through the chapter. You can read through the chapter and then answer the quiz questions as you go through the chapter, or you can make things tricky by answering them first and then going through the chapter and seeing how much you are familiar with or accurate with with this story. So for example, it asks, what is Mrs. Bennet's exciting news at the beginning of chapter one? Who is the name of the new rich gentleman in town? How many years have the Bennets been married? So things of that nature, things that are kind of specific, and it really makes you pay attention to the details of the story in a different way, which is really fun for me because a lot of it, I kind of learned the nuances of the story that I didn't know before. I really like this edition because the font is quite easy to read. At the end of each chapter, there's a little quote, chapter three, she is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. Mm -hmm. No, you'll rethink that, Darcy. I really liked the word searches. I used different color markers to do them, and they were so much fun. I just really enjoyed them, and they all have to do with terms that you just write in the chapter, which makes things a little bit easier, especially on the chapters with the crossword puzzles, because then you know you're only choosing from a short amount of words. So the nice thing is there's an answer key in the back, so if you don't know any of the answers to the quizzes, or you get confused with a crossword puzzle, or can't find a word search, you have that resource to aid you. I just really thought this was a creative way to engage with a classic book. If you're someone like me who can't read them very quickly, who kind of needs like a break from them at times, I found that I could read several chapters at a time because I had that break between the chapter one and chapter two where I can do a word search or I can do a crossword puzzle. And then I can take the quiz and check to make sure I'm understanding it without just being inundated with this vernacular that is out of the ordinary for me as a contemporary reader. What I started to do was take a pencil and underline different things that stuck out to me, things I didn't know about the story, and I also started circling vocabulary words that I wasn't familiar with and then looking them up. When I read ebooks, I always define words that I'm not familiar with to enhance my understanding of the story and increase my vocab. Sometimes I didn't want to stop and look up the word, I just wanted to get the context of the story. But I did circle some words that stuck out to me as something I wanted to really define to really clear up that definition and not just keep it kind of hazy, but something that's more focused and clear. The first eight or nine chapters, I had a pencil that I had just left in the book, so I was underlining with that. And then I quickly switched over to pen because the thing about pencil that I don't like to annotate with is it starts to leave that like graphite, the, the lead from inside the pencil, and it can get on your fingers. I switched over to pen. Um, pen is great. I did start to write some notes. <laughs> oh my gosh, in chapter 10, Nothing is more deceitful than the appearance of humility. It is often carelessness of opinion, and sometimes an indirect boast. I underlined that, and then I wrote, Somebody done Mr. Darcy wrong. Mm -mm. So, it's funny to hear my commentary on things when I, I go back. There's so many times in this book, let me tell you. We already know that Elizabeth Bennet is sassy, right? She, she's intelligent, and she's witty, and she's clever. <laughs> There's so many burns, like underhanded, like... 
burns in this story. There's so many times I wrote burn. Oh my goodness. Or <laughs> end of chapter 11. The last line about Mr. Darcy is he began to feel the danger of paying Elizabeth too much attention. And I wrote bum bum bum. <laughs> so it's really funny to like see these moments, be able to pick them out. I have also made a video about my annotation experience for Persuasion, and that annotation was with markers. I kind of wish that I had used these markers when I was annotating this book. So for a lot of it, nothing looks different. I can't differentiate by the color, what character, or the emotion that I associated with this. I'd have to like read through a little bit more clearly. I did, and as time went on, switch from pen to marker. Only one color, so I have a whole bunch of just green marker, but I really liked annotating with marker best. So this was like the lesson learning process where it doesn't look cohesive, but I was able to stay engaged with the story, to be able to write my thoughts on the page, and still have a lot of fun reading this story. It's of course such an iconic book, and I enjoyed the audiobook, but I didn't love it when I read it a few years ago, so I was kind of hoping that I'd have a different experience reading the book, and I can say for certain that that was the case. I caught more of the nuances, more of the underhanded burns that maybe just kind of went over my head when it would just keep going on audio. And also some of the vernacular, these comments and things, they're not said the way we would say them. So I had to kind of think about them for a minute or read them again and be like, oh wait, that's a, oh, that was a burn. Like it's, it's just really fun to be able to identify those things and feel like I'm picking up more on Jane Austen's style and Jane Austen's way of wording things in addition to the story that she's telling. Obviously this isn't me rating the story because I really liked the story to begin with. I loved the film adaptations. I liked the audiobook, but I really, really enjoyed visiting it via the original format that Jane Austen created it to be in. And it was fun to be a part of this world. It was fun to feel like I had a more 3D understanding of the characters as opposed to how they are represented in the films and how we can kind of get inside everybody's heads and not just Elizabeth's. It was nice to have that experience and be able to dive into the way the author was telling the story. With that being said, I thoroughly enjoyed this. If you are at all interested in this quiz book edition, it's by Kay Carpenter. And you can find it if you just, I think, type in Jane Austen quiz book or something. Like I said, not an ad. But if you're somebody like me who just likes something different and wants to kind of savor the story and enjoy it, this is definitely one way you can do so. So with that being said, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more fun bookish things from me. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.